Greetings from the NASA Develop Program. During the summer of 2011, a group of developed students at NASA Langley Research Center conducted a research project studying China air quality. The team consisted of Minoc Wynn, Peter Johnson, Catherine Morell, Samantha Goff, and Chelsea Brown. Their research focused on the topic of monitoring aerosol changes over eastern China using NASA Earth observations. Eastern China is home to roughly a billion people. Agriculture, industry, and energy are major contributors of air pollution for the country. Due to severe health implications for the people of China and nearby countries, the DEVELOP team conducted an assessment of air quality methods that can be utilized by an end user. The team focused their efforts on conducting a case study of the 2008 Beijing Olympics. When constructing their research methodology, the students also wanted to approach this topic from the perspective of the end user. How hard to use are the available air quality data sets and models was the question that the students wanted to address. Before we proceed further, I would also like to extend a special recognition and thanks to Dr. Richard Farrar at Langley Research Center, who served as a mentor for the students conducting this project. The study area covered the whole of eastern China, but the students placed special emphasis on the cities of Beijing, Shanghai, Linfen, and Changsha due to their high levels of air pollution. Their goal was to provide a methodology to end users for future air quality monitoring, which would provide the benefit of measuring aerosols and enhancing the effectiveness of large-scale air quality monitoring. To understand aerosol activity and composition, the students utilized MODIS aerosol optical depth products for land and ocean, along with Calliope aerosol profile features. In addition, the team used NOAA high split model trajectories to track air pollution plumes from each city. The students acquired data sets for the project through NASA's Warehouse Inventory Search Tool, or WIST, which provides a web-based gateway to earth science and remote sensing data sets stored at several distributed active archive centers, also known as DACs and also from Giovanni, a web-based application for visualizing and analyzing remote sensing data. The team also collected information from the website of the U.S. Embassy located in Beijing. No additional processing was required for any of the pre-processed MODIS and Calliope datasets which the students obtained. Google Earth was used simply as a visualization tool for illustrating MODIS data in a meaningful and easily understood manner. On this slide, you can see several examples of MODIS aerosol optical depth, or AOD, data plotted in Google Earth and split by season from December 2004 through November 2005. The yellow and orange shades depict higher AOD values, whereas the blue and purple hues depict lower values. Cooler months generally have lower AOD than warmer months, which you can see illustrated on the graphics above, where the winter and fall months show generally lower AOD values in the blue and green shades. On this slide, you can see four different plots of MODIS AOD values for the city of Beijing. In the top left graphic, two years of monthly MODIS AOD values have been plotted to demonstrate the seasonal variation of AOD values. You can see the rise of AOD values during the warmer months and the fall of AOD values in the cooler months. In the top right graphic, Monthly AOD data has been plotted for all months from the year 2000 through April 2010. In the lower left graphic, the 2006 to 2008 time period has been separated from the others, showing a trend line. This is the time frame encompassing the 2008 Beijing Olympics. In the lower right, all data except for 2006 to 2008 is depicted. The slope of the trends indicates no statistically significant improvement on air quality leading up to the 2008 Olympic events. This graphic depicts MODIS AOD summertime data from 2000 to 2009. Again, remember the data on this chart is only in the summer. The red circle indicates year 2008. The month of August is when the Summer Olympic Games took place and the August AOD value is the lowermost point circled in red here on the graph. Of the three data points shown here in the red circle, August is the lowest. But you can also see from examining the rest of the graph that this 2008 August value is not the lowest overall for AOD values between 2000 and 2009. 
This result suggests that one cannot determine with certainty that there were any significant improvements in air quality leading up to the Olympic Games. To gain insight into the composition of aerosols over eastern China, the students conducted a thorough analysis of several calliope aerosol profiles. In summary, they traced one swath for each designated coordinate and analyzed the type and magnitude of aerosols monthly from 2006 to 2010. When interpreting this data, some uncertainties that must be considered are as follows. First, dust is non-spherical and may be picked up more by the LIDAR. Secondly, the swath is not exactly over the coordinates. However, the aerosol subtype feature does help give an idea of what types of aerosols are present in the cities of Beijing, Linfen, Shanghai, and Changsha. After analyzing the Calliope aerosol profiles, the team used Microsoft Excel to organize the data according to month, year, and season. The graphs above show the measured percentage of each aerosol present in each city for the spring and summer seasons. The spring and summer seasons are shown here because these two seasons show elevated levels of air pollution. Overall, there is dust, polluted dust, and smoke present all year long in each of the cities in the study area. The Calypso data generally suggests improved air quality in all four cities, particularly Beijing. However, there is not enough evidence to indicate a positive correlation between Beijing Olympic air quality improvement efforts and actual improved air quality. Please note here, however, that there are only a few Calliope profile images per month and that it is difficult to use calliope for distinguishing smoke and dust. This slide shows high split model trajectory output maps for Beijing, Shanghai, Linfin, and Changsha. To the left of each map, the prevailing wind direction as predicted by high split model runs are depicted for each season. In the cities of Beijing and Linfin, shown on the left-hand side of the screen, high split results were consistent with general local wind patterns as was expected. However, some of the high split results contradicted local wind pattern data, especially for the cities of Shanghai and Changsha, shown on the right side of the screen. For example, available wind pattern data suggests that Shanghai's overall pattern is dominantly east-southeast, but high split outputs for the same region show a northeasterly prevailing wind. Similarly, in Changsha, wind pattern data imply an overall prevailing wind from a northwesterly direction, but high split outputs show a southwesterly result. Several times, the students found that the seasonal correlations for the wind pattern data was the exact opposite of what the data for the high split correlation said, which was an interesting uh, development in the students' research. For example, in the city of Changsha, wind pattern data for the winter time predicted a northwesterly flow, whereas high split predicted a southwesterly flow. Again, in the springtime, the wind, as depicted by local weather wind pattern data, is northwesterly, whereas high split predicted a southwesterly wind. In the summertime, general local wind pattern data shows a southerly flow, whereas high split predicts a northeasterly flow. In the fall, whereas local wind information shows a northwesterly prevailing wind, high split predicted a southwesterly prevailing wind. Although the high split model outputs were fairly consistent with local wind pattern data in the east and west directions, they were generally reversed in the north and south directions. There are a few possible explanations for why this is the case. First, weather inconsistencies such as storms. Secondly, cold fronts and third, the height at which the wind pattern data was taken. Overall, the students concluded that MODIS AOD and Calypso data products, when used in conjunction with high split trajectories, provide a satisfactory macro scale assessment of aerosols. However, from the perspective of an end user or decision maker, many of the models and data sets are difficult to use. An additional conclusion is that the statistics based on the students' 2008 Olympics case study do not identify any decrease beyond natural variability during the 2006 to 2008 time period.
That concludes this presentation. Thank you for listening.